What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Miles Horror Podcast. We are taking a little trip down to the boardwalk and going to go visit some friends. And one of the friends we are visiting today, Swerve, how you doing? Hey, doing good. How are you? I'm doing all right. I uh, can't complain. I'm I'm still alive for another day, right? <laughs> That's how it goes. <laughs> That's how it goes. So you're, uh, you've got quite the resume on you between Haunt and other things. It's just, I, I don't know how you keep up with all of it. <laughs> it is very hard. I chose stress. Yeah. Every single year that I live. <laughs> it, it, yeah, no, I, I feel that 100%, especially when Haunt season and, and summer rolls around. I'm, I'm so busy on this channel that I just, like, I, I'm done. Like, I just, my body just shuts down, and I'm just like, I, I don't want to do this no more. <laughs> it's a vibe. <laughs> yeah, we have the days where like we don't want to do this no more, but then we get back up and we're like, yeah, we know why we do this. It's a whole thing. Um, so you have a very um, extensive uh, haunt background, going going back a few years, uh, different places at Knotts. Um, talk to us a little bit about how you got a uh, you got introduced to the realm of of the haunt world. Um, well, actually, I didn't even know that like haunt things existed until I started working at Haunt. Right. Uh, I was actually, I made friends with someone who worked in Ghost Town Alive, and then they were like, hey, you should come audition for Knots uh, during Scary Farm, because you like acting. I was like, yeah, I do. Okay. And then I got slapped with my first role in Paranormal Inc. as uh, the front room show host, and I had a freaking blast. Nice. And and from one, yeah. my understanding, aren't you the first female to do that role yes i am yeah Cause that's because the the stock name for that character is chad and it's supposed to be like the zach baggins kind of character like the, right i want the ghost to punch me in the face <laughs> <laughs> zach why <laughs> so so i can see where you did a lot of your homework then <laughs> yes <laughs> ghost just, adventures on repeat just watching episodes upon episodes of ghost adventures <laughs> that's just that's it absolutely that's I awesome. I dare this demon to come possess me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Tea posing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love that show. That's one of my favorite. But that that is quite the honor because that was changing the game right there and opened up doors for other people to do that. Yeah, I, I definitely really liked that role because the, um, you know, we like ran through the whole show moment. And then afterwards, our lead was like, okay, at this moment, when Emily busts through the wall and you're trying to, like, get people to go through, do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> like, we were like, oh, sick. So, like, all three of us did something different. Uh, That's cool. And I went, like, the whole super bendy, possessed by a demon kind of vibe. <laughs> and people loved it. <laughs> um, what year was your, what, what was I, what was the first year you joined on the haunt? What year was that? Uh, 2017. 2017. Who was the cast lead then? Uh, it was Byron. Okay. For Paranormal. Okay. Um, yeah, because I've talked to a couple of people who've cast led that, that maze, and I hear a lot of funny stories, so I can only <laughs> imagine the uh, chaos and the and the fun that you guys had Oh, it was that. it was a baller time. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how did you feel this year, though, when, it, when uh, you found out that it was going to be its last year? Were you a little sad about it, a little bummed out? Uh, yeah, I was a little sad. There were actually a couple of uh, people that were like, you should ask if you could go into Paranormal for one night and like do your do your thing. I was like, no. No, nah, I'm, I'm good. like, that's okay. I'm like, I've been there and done that. Like, yes, it was <laughs> my favorite thing because it got me started in the whole haunt industry. But yeah, it's okay. Let, every, let other people have their fun. So after changing the game the first year, man, and and being the first female to 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 take on that lead role inside of Paranormal Inc., um, how did the overall season go after after rehearsing and, and and doing everything and opening night leading into closing night? How did that all go for you? Uh, when it first started off, it was like a little bit rough, just because you know first time doing anything spooky in my life. You're right, <laughs> um, but. You know, as the nights went on, all three of us ended up, like, collaborating with each other. There were some points where all of us were having such a good time, me and the other two people who were the Chads, that right. we would all go in during one shift and, like, do the show as a trio or, like, a duo. It was just, it was so much fun. We all had a really, really good time. Uh, 
but you know it just got better and better as the season went on yeah oh 100 percent. that that i i would say out of the years i've been to knots that's probably up there in my top five favorite of all time at the oh, event shush, yeah. <laughs> i mean it's just it, you look at a maze i mean think about when it when it first debuted and how beautiful it looked like i don't think a lot of that it, it just took things to a whole new level um yeah. that i i still don't really see too much today like i'll see sprinkles of stuff here and there but i haven't seen a complete paranormal ink like an, a part two to that like i haven't seen like a whole another maze do anything like that so to see what they did with that and and, and the timing of it it was just it was so revolutionary in the haunt world that it really opened doors to new things for future mazes at not scary farm so it, it really really changed the game and, and you got to be a part of that history so that's that's really cool yeah absolutely yeah, it's one of my so, favorite mazes. It'll always be in my heart. There it is. So, 2018. Uh, I'm assuming you had a great time. You had a, you're coming back for round two. What are we going? <laughs> what, are we, what are we diving in deep for? Uh, 2018. I actually got cast in Ghost Town. Oh. Yeah, rookie or first year on street, second year at Haunt. Got Ghost Town. Ghost Town. And what was the character on Ghost Town? Uh, the like title name is called the War Widow. Okay. But I kind of just, like, made it into a spider league. There's, like, the Black Widow, who's, like, the actual spider woman. Right. But then I decked my stuff out with, like, some more spiders and all that. So it was just, like, the spider and then the spider league. <laughs> I, I don't I, really know what I was, but I worked with it. <laughs> I don't think I would go anywhere near you because I don't like spiders. <laughs> uh, it's funny because I am arachnophobic. <laughs> <So> <laughs> but, like, I hate spiders, but the spi- the the aesthetic of spiders and like spider webs is so sexy. <laughs> you you just like you just channeled your inner Batman right there. You were just like, <laughs> I don't like this, so I'm going to embrace it and take the fear with me. <laughs> so But if uh, but if a real spider comes at me, it's like You're like ah, put I'm that good. thing back where it came from more so help me. Put that thing back where it came from more so <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Oh, man. Yeah, so, I mean, that's cool, though. Ghost Town's second year. I mean, you don't hear a lot of stories that do that. I think very few have, have gotten to do that. And and for you to jump in there and, and kind of and do that. So uh, going into this role, what was your reactions when you received the, what you were doing, where you were going, and, and how did that feel leading up to opening night? Um, It was kind of a surprise getting streets. I was not expecting to. Right. Uh, so when they told me like, oh, I'd like to offer you the role of the war widow. I was like, cool. What is that? <laughs> it was like Tobey Maguire and Spider-Man. <laughs> like the looks that I got from the casting directors were like, are this, is this serious? And I'm like, I don't know. This is my second year here. I didn't get to go out on the streets or anything. It was like, like, I didn't, I never visited any sort of haunts before 2017 because I didn't know that they existed. Right. So like 2017 was my exposure to all of haunt knots was like i don't want to brag but we're part of the avengers you're like the avengers that's great what is that are you in a band are you banned you're a band (laughs) oh man that's hilarious yeah um yeah uh, 2018 was a lot of fun uh definitely a learning curve especially like being in a fog alley specifically right it was very hard because yeah. the contacts that I had didn't really let me see all that well in Fog Alley. Because mm-hmm. I had, like, at one point I had two blind-out contacts that have, like, the mesh right. on it. And I would, like, go to turn into Fog Alley and be like, ah! and then I have to turn away <laughs> and <I> go somewhere <laughs> else. <laughs> Dude. I, that, I've heard a lot of stories going down to Fog Alley, especially when I have contacts on. It's the worst, but oh, yeah. it's all worth it in the end. <laughs> That's cool. Um, Best and, scares in there. Oh, yeah, 100%. I'll, I'll spend – we used to sit on the bench right in front of uh, Ghost Town Grub mm-hmm. just chilling right there and just to watch people, and it was one of the best spots, uh, except on a crowded night. It sucked. Oh, yeah. Because um, we were like, we can't stretch our legs out because we'll trip people. <laughs> I mean – I mean, that wouldn't be I the worst thing, though, you know? <laughs> I mean, the monster gets a laugh. I get a laugh. Maybe security gets a laugh. It's all worth it in the end. It's all worth it, yeah. Um, yeah, Ghost Town, iconic location right there. I know many have uh, wanted the opportunity, and many are still, um, many have gotten it, many are still uh, working towards it. Um, and 
the legacy, I guess, that zone leaves over the years and, and has left is uh, second to none. And, and the people that continue to keep that legacy alive, uh, embracing a lot of the iconic characters from the past and even creating new ones uh, for, for years to come. It's just such a, a beautiful zone. And, and to me, there's really nothing that can top that. Like, that zone is... If anyone knows Haunt, even on the East Coast, you see people talk about it. If anyone knows Haunt, they know Ghost Town. Yeah, it, it, it's 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 just it's just iconic. It's it and it feels and it, the the fact of the matter is the irony in it is it feels like a western, where <laughs> everyone knows that one cowboy, um, yeah. and that one place, you know. So that, that that is yeah, it's one of my favorite zones and and whatnot. And I have a fun time going through it every year. What was your, honestly, what was one of your favorite moments uh, scaring in Ghost Town that year? Um, there was a point where, uh, so there's this little alleyway we call Kmart. Yep, very well familiar with it. Okay, so scaring in Kmart was actually one of my favorite things to do, especially when they had that blue light over ahead the farm, or yeah. the, the barn, leading out to the street area that bench right there that's where i would always yeah. sit every haunt <laughs> um but scary in kmart there was one time where it was just filled with so much fog but it was like layered so it was a bunch of fog behind and then low down fog like uh about where my hips were right uh and there was this group of girls that were walking towards and like it's you all that you see at that moment is like just a silhouette, like a creepy looking silhouette twitching. It's like, oh fuck. <laughs> and then I heard those girls and they all started like reacting like, oh my God, what is that? Oh, ah. You know, as teenage girls do. And then I just dropped into the fog, disappeared. And then more like, oh shit, it's all ah, more freaking out. Um, then they all decided to like keep moving forward. And then I um, like ducked down below the fog. I could see their feet. So I was like, this is perfect. And I popped up right next to one and, like, just kept doing that, just popping down, popping up. That, <laughs> oh Scaring God. him that way. So that was, that was really fun. And I yeah. got to do that a couple of times. I, I, I absolutely loved sitting in Kmart. That was one of my, some of my favorite moments. And, and moments like that, it, it was something I, I've actually gotten to witness. And it was, it was <laughs> just – it's so funny to sit there because they don't see you in the darkness. And then they think you're a monster, and then they get scared. And it's like, bro, I just, I'm just sitting here. <laughs> I just live here, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro, I just I got my funnel cake. Like I'm just enjoying the show. You guys just keep coming through. <laughs> yeah, but good scare moments like that, and then also like meeting people and sort of like adopting them. Right. In a sense, like as a monster, there's I don't think there's anything better than like adopting somebody. Right. Uh, like there's this kid that still comes to this day to visit me at scary farm and they like message me they're like hey where are you at this year I'm like oh i'm here this year I'm like okay and then they come and say hi and i'm just like my child <laughs> just got a fan <laughs> that just wants to keep coming support you that's awesome yeah that is so got cool. a couple of those i i do love them they're very near and dear to my heart oh i mean i mean that's that's why you're we're doing this podcast right now because i am one of them <laughs> oh Thanks. I think we we talked about this all last season. Last season, man, I I text you on the regular. You're like, how was your night? How did everything go? Yeah, I appreciate you, dude. Man, Feel that's homie. what I do. I like to look out for my friends, man. I like to make sure everyone's doing okay health wise. Everyone's good, and I like Damn to hear right. them out. You know, I like to hear some rants about what happened in the night that may have pissed them off, and so you know. Um, Awesome, 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 awesome year of, of Ghost Town, it sounded like, for you. And <laughs> and the fact that you got to go there on your second year is nuts, man. That's that's so cool that you got to do that. Um, so it's already pretty stacked resume as it is. <laughs> let's, let's, let's take a look back before we go forward. Yep. We got first female as the lead role in Paranormal as the, uh, the TV show host. You got first year on Ghost Town, or um, first, or your second year. First year, of, God, I can't even talk today. <laughs> Second year was Ghost Town, your first year on streets. Um, and now we're moving into 2019. Where do we see you go from here? Uh, 2019, I was tossed into Forsaken Lake as a griever. <sighs> nice. I think I want to say, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> We were going to do a podcast in 2019. We were, but then 
we time were, happened. <laughs> time, and we were overbooked, and yep. we were already drowning in the pool of of sorrow that we already already, oh, we already made for us. But I mean, we still had a great year, and then we we scheduled it for we were gonna do it in twenty twenty one, and then I took my my break, and then uh, now we're here. <laughs> we are. We finally we made full we've made full circle. I mean, it took about you know three three years, but we yeah. got it. We got it down. Time is a construct. Yeah, right. I mean, it's all it's all in here. I mean, it's all you know, it's all fake. It's what you make of it. Darn right. So so 2019. I've seen a lot of photos of you in 2019. Uh, do some weird stuff with some some vines and and whatnot. Uh, <laughs> Explain to me uh, your character going into 2019 and, and and how that idea of that Vine stuff came came about. Uh, so I was not expecting at all to get into Forsaken Lake. It was actually one of the last zones I wanted to go into. Right. Because I was like, I don't really think like I could make that scary. Because especially the Griever position, like, yeah, it's spooky, but like the character description that we as the grievers got was you're a sad woman because your husband isn't dead with you so you mainly target couples because they're happy and they're together and you're alone relying on a man and i was like fuck that you're like fuck <laughs> like, man this is got need deep no man. <laughs> you're like this has got deep man i'm here to scare not cry Exactly. I was like, man, I don't want to cry at people. Yeah. I'm like, sure that's a little unsettling, but like, I want to scare people. <laughs> I want to make people piss themselves, and I yeah. did. Uh, so the the character backstory that I came up for my character, like on the spot, was, uh, like you know, she was married at one point, and then she was a barren woman, couldn't bear any children. Her husband got pissed and killed her and then threw her in the lake and drowned her nice and then you know over time you know stuff grows in decaying bodies so like (laughs) vines and moss and all this kind of lake stuff algae exactly algae uh and you know green witch curse forsaken lake rise up and then you have all these soggy haunted mansion zombies walking around (laughs) <laughs> my ass would just I, be like, Ugh. <laughs> like I'm a little soggy. <laughs> my socks are wet. It's gross. <laughs> Get it off me. <laughs> um, yeah, which is where the that like vine stuff came from of me pulling it out of my mouth. God, when I saw a photo of that, I remember <laughs> just legitimately going, "How the fuck?" what and um i i was just I, I was both blown away by it and disgusted by it but in a good way i guess i i don't know it was it was one of those things where i looked at it i'm like this is really creepy and cool but what <laughs> like it, it was it was it was good i mean it was something that i i don't think um i've ever seen done at a haunt uh, at least the, since I've been going, uh, it's probably been done many times, but I've never seen it ever. And 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 what you did with it, with that zone and that theming, really worked perfectly. What what was it that you that vine was made out of? Like, how did you what did, what did you make that out of? Uh, it's actually like a wedding decoration fabric from Amazon. Okay. And you can get it in like an eighteen foot spool. Okay. Uh, and it's literally just like a single strip of fabric that's cut to look like a le- like leaves on a vine okay so i would every single night i would get a new one because reusing it is disgusting yeah um <laughs> but i would get like a huge length of it double it up tie knots into it to where i would have a loop okay. at the end of it and then i just put that in my mouth down my throat and then pull it out <sighs> that, and i uh... also like hide it underneath my tongue when i was talking to people with like a little bit of it hanging out okay and i could still like talk completely clearly and people would be like like you have something in your mouth i'd be like oh this <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh man forsaken lake and I, I i think that zone honestly aesthetic wise and everything is so beautiful oh absolutely uh, the costuming is just so uh, shout out to the designers of this the zone and the costuming people who keep it up every year i mean mm. 
It is such a beautiful zone. The costumes look amazing. Um, makeup is great. Everything just looks great in that zone. I, I, I really wish they would expand on it more and, and give it more of a uh, more uh, continue more on that story. Like bring back that maze where Gunslinger was and maybe make an origin story to Forsaken, which would be so dope. I totally agree with that. Like that, Forsaken Lake is gorgeous, gorgeous zone. I wish that they would put more time into getting more like scenic props for that area. Yeah. It's really only down that one way. And then you turn to where like silver bullet is and you have like a tree and yeah. that's it. It's like, Oh yeah, for real. I I've, <laughs> I've suggested that, uh, it would be cool to, to bring back a scare zone in uh fiesta village and make mm-hmm. the one half of it, uh, kind of, forsaken but it would be like Lyarona in there to keep the kind of Mexican folktale going yeah um, that would be bitching to see like a Lyarona area right there too especially leading into Fiesta Village like and then that maybe can be an expansion to that zone yeah like I I see pictures of Fiesta all the time and like know several who were in Fiesta like Fiesta was pretty yeah it wasn't scary because all mm-hmm. that you literally all that was there from my knowledge was sugar skull people like yeah. that's not fucking scary that's just pretty like, yeah throw some legends in there like yeah like la llorona and like fucking throw a chupacabra in there chupacabra like, bro i would lose my shit i'd be like it's the fucking it's chupacabra <laughs> man i would fuck up a chupacabra part <laughs> just have like little stuffed animal goats covered in blood just, hell like, yeah bleat at people like a that very angrily easily should be something and, and here goes the the uh the wishful um designing part of the podcast um straight me and we're, we're creating a zone right now and, and i think the zone i would love to see in, in fiesta village would be uh something based, based around mexican folk tales especially the scary ones you got la Llorona, chupacabra i'm pretty sure there's a hundred other things um oh, absolutely like, you could really deck out that zone and, and have, like, different, like, people playing victims, and then they're, they're spreading the rumors about all these, or they're spreading the word about all these different, um, you know, uh, urban legends, and then you're kind of walking around like, what the hell? And then you see them. That'd be dope. Yeah. Hey, Knots, if you're listening, I'm your man. Bring me on board. I got you. <laughs> Do a ton of research. <laughs> um, yeah, but Forsaken Lake, however, uh, I, I really I would love to see more and expanding on it. The only sucky part is it, it because of the theming of the zone and because of how small that area is, it really would only fit that area. Um, but I would love to see it expanded more somehow um, to kind of give it that story zone. But I'm really I'm, I'm really waiting for that fiftieth. That fiftieth is gonna, gonna pop, bro. It's gonna. Oh, absolutely! I can't wait to see what they have. It's going to be the legendary. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like, my mind's going a million places. Like, are they going to bring back mazes? Are they going to, are they going to, like, what are they going to do? Like, I'm I'm anxious, and we got to still wait another year. But I was like, it's all right. I'll, I'll have this year to get me by, and then all that. But Forsaken Lake sounds like you had a, a really great time in there. What were some, uh, I would assume, just that vine thing really that really blew you up there i remember seeing that being posted a lot a lot of people talking about and stuff and and seeing even videos of of guest recording and and their reactions on it was was nuts um but overall you did you have a great time going in there and 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 kind of expanding that in the year you know your your career in the haunt world uh yeah once i got into the swing of things and really kind of found what i was looking for in the zone I had a really good time. Uh, made a couple people even throw up. I was like, yes! <laughs> Mission I accomplished. I high-fived myself once, that, once I like walked away. I was like, yeah! You went into your <laughs> wrist like the FBI. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, once I got that whole thing down and like my scare tactics for that character in that zone, I had a ball our time. Uh, and the the funeral procession, where beautiful, I was when it was my turn to be inside of the box right. and like push out. That was fun. I, it was the funnest part of my night. Like every time it was my turn, I was like, oh, "Let's go!" <laughs> like, inside the box, I'm like, "Let's go!" It'd be like thirty minutes before the show. You're already back there getting ready. <laughs> Someone comes back. What are you doing? I'm getting ready. 
I'm vibing. <laughs> this is how I get in character. <laughs> this is my character. <laughs> Oh man, that's awesome. I mean, I, I'm glad to see you had a great thing, and I'm glad to see you made the most of it with what you had, and you even introduced something that people will remember forever and ever to go. Absolutely, on, it, it still gets talked about today. Yeah, and also like Forsaken Lake, like it's a small zone, so so everybody's like so tight knit, like it feels like a family right. over there. Like everybody always checks in on each other, plan like hangouts outside of haunt. Like it's it's just a, it's a great little community that forsaken lake has going on and i absolutely love it and i still talk to a lot whole bunch of people that are in forsaken lake still yeah such a talented cast um, of people i mean i got to go through it more time uh, more attention th this last season and, and just mm -hmm. to see everyone do their thing over there it was just amazing time i need to get more forsaken lake people on this show talk with them i'm glad i got you though i got Woo! you as, as one of my one of my first so that's cool. I I I, re I loved it, and 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 I continue to support it, and I can't wait to see what happens next. So, uh, the the year that no one predicted, twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. Oh man, uh, started off not so great, and it just went downhill from there. Um, yeah. So 2020, the pandemic hits, and, and not a lot of things are going on. You know, a lot of the things are either drive through or, or um, you know, limited capacity, social distance, all that stuff. Masks are mandated around the, uh, the events you want to go to and check out. What, uh, what, 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 what do you do for 2020? Do you just do you take the time to, go, to take the year off and, and go visit some things, or did you find something? Like, what did you do for 2020? Uh, for 2020, I not really anything changed like work wise i still had my job and i just got like three days off right and then went right back to work so nothing had really changed for me right. uh but i did get an opportunity to scare at la haunted hayride nice which is where uh i brought my blue and green light up electric clown i named her laughter shock uh, okay. I brought her to that, and there's a a, t a viral TikTok that went around like wildfire. Uh, it's references like the Hot Cheeto video. Um, okay. And it's just there's this car driving down the street. I'm walking up the street, and it's just you want a hot Cheeto, and I pop off immediately, no hesitation. No, I'm allergic. It's just <laughs> that's it. That was the video. <laughs> Except like, you know, I had the, the deep gravelly character voice right. for that. But like, it just popped off. And I, I, <laughs> yeah. You know, I have to say that year for Haunted Hayride, I actually really enjoyed it. And I did both experiences. I did mm -hmm. general admission and I did the VIP, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the wagon. Nice. Um, I had fun both ways. I mean, I got to see how it was like from different perspectives. Obviously, that VIP one was a lot of fun because we got to sat out, sit outside and, you know, enjoy everything. And we were up close and personal with everything. It was really cool. And then yeah. I, I did one where I sat in the very back and, and still had a great experience. I think I had a little bit of better experience in the very back, surprisingly. Um, yeah. Scare actors and wise, they were on top of their, their game. But I, I really enjoyed it. And it, it kind of hurts me when I hear people going, yeah, it was all right. I was like... A little history on, on 2020's Hayride. <laughs> they had one thing planned. Pandemic screwed it up. And they put this event together in a matter of weeks. Yep. So much respect to you for even trying to, 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 to attempt to do something in, in the middle of a pandemic. Because I had fun. And I wasn't complaining because I got to do something. Hell yeah. I also had fun. <laughs> yeah. So talk talk to me about because uh, it was a really uh, it was a it was a different type of haunt experience than you have at, at normal um, haunts every year. I've heard this from a few people. It was usually like you you got to go on for a little bit and then you know you did the show and then you you, you took a little bit of a break longer than usually that you do at at, at any other haunt. How how did that experience uh, benefit or not benefit you in in this year in that year? Uh, I actually got a different role. Uh, okay. I got to do a one-night thing where that long road 
where you drive down to the actual vent where all those facades are, right. I got to scare up and down that road. Oh, like okay. before you get into the actual event. Right. So it was like super fun. Yeah. Uh, doing that for just the one night. And I, I had such a great time. It it's was, almost like it you had your own private a, zone, huh? Yeah. It was definitely an odd experience because it was like, I'm scaring people inside of their cars. I'm scaring cars. Yeah. <laughs> No, it was it was a very interesting year. I mean, I I, I saw it everywhere I went. I had a drive up, drive through experience. It was like, okay, this is interesting. I can't really walk or move anywhere if I get scared. Like I just gotta stay in my car. Yeah, I have to sit and suffer. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not even that. I, I I think I would have just ducked on the floor, but like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> Lays down, rolls up the windows, boom, you're good to go. <laughs> No, that wasn't me. I was I was windows down, head out, like scare the shit out of me in my car. I want to see if this works or not. Yep. Yeah that that maze that uh that that event was really good, and there was one specific sp- spot in in what you were talking about where they were playing uh, Misfits, and I'm a, I'm a diehard Misfits fan, so uh, we were leaving the the event the first night we went, and I heard it, and we were uh, my friend was driving like we had to, I mean we had to keep going, we couldn't stop. I'm like just stop here. I want to listen to Misfits for a little bit. Don't move. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, if you move, we're done. <laughs> but, yeah, that was a good event, and I'm glad to see you got to do – you had a lot of freedom to to do that, especially because, you know, a lot of the – of what I've – people I've talked to who worked that event that year, it was like an hour on, like 45 minutes off. Like, it was kind of a weird schedule, and it was weird to keep, you know, try to keep going because, like, you would rest for so long that you would get so tired and, and done that you had to get back up and do it and get back into it. And it was it – was, an interesting experience to say the least, but to see you got to have pretty much your own scare zone in a way and scare cars like that was awesome. Yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely pretty damn cool. Yeah. I mean, I don't think you can really, uh, a lot of people that did that probably can be like, yeah, we did that too. You know, you had a, <laughs> you had a somewhat n- more normal haunt season in 2020 than a lot of people did. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So we're, you know, 2021 comes around and we are, Things are opening back up. Haunts coming up slowly but surely. We're seeing more things get announced. Halloween Horror Nights is announcing stuff. Knots is slowly announcing things. New Maze of Knots. New Scare Zone. Triumphant Return to Knots. How was that? It was great. Because <laughs> I actually was tr- I got into Carnival this past year in 2021. That's why I'm wearing uh, and the hat. I actually wanted to do what we call it knots our uh the world tour yep where it's you have been in every single zone and at least like one maze right i was trying my best to save carnival for last because it's where i knew i was gonna want to stay until i died and it (laughs) is i was right i have such a good time in carnival i don't want to (laughs) leave and i probably never will so hollow going 20s sorry you're out of the books sorry guys (laughs) Oh man! So coming back, getting back on another street zone. So let's let's uh, we did this already once. Let's do it again. Yep. Let's let's relook at the history. <laughs> first female in paranormal to do one of the leading roles. Ghost Town, first year on streets. Forsaken Lake, and you made something iconic with a character that you had gotten very little info of, and and you did something, and, and it worked for that year, and people were talking about it. 2020 we go to haunted hayride and we practically have our own scare zone which is just a great concept of an idea like i if i were to scare i would do that because it's more freedom to do what i want (laughs) and now we're going into 2021 you're on carnival man and the iconic carnival goring 20s feud began in 2021 (laughs) i've heard many stories on both sides so uh, you got to let me know, like, what was it like? Obviously, you guys were tearing it up every weekend. There was a back and forth competition between you and Goring for Scare Zone of the Night every single night that haunt went on. How was that competition for you, and and what made you want to step up the game even more to to finalize that win at the end? Uh, honestly, I wasn't paying attention to like the, the Golden <laughs> Haunt Award until like almost to the end of the season i was just like what you're like this is I'm the like, thing we're tied. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like i didn't know until the very end that like it was neck and neck between us and goring 20s but honestly i was just kind of doing my own thing i was vibing having a great time oh, pulling man. out my my hulk hogan voice and like what you're gonna do brother <laughs> 
Exactly. <laughs> Just, I was being an absolute terror, and I loved it. A chaotic mess. I mean, I've seen, I saw so many funny things from you that last season. I mean, <laughs> I, I think I even Thank called you. your button one time Captain America Shield. <laughs> Which is funny because it actually... I made it from a Disneyland Captain America foam shield. <laughs> like the one that you get at the end of uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy yeah. ride at Disneyland. I got to just pick that up, and I was like, this is going to be a button. This is going to be a button. We're going to work it out. So, <laughs> I mean, from that to uh, the, the the gummy worms, gummy bears, I mean, I, I saw so many, the peach rings, all that stuff, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I saw so many funny things from you. I mean, and the fact that you and I would constantly quote Beetlejuice almost every night that I went. I mean, <laughs> it, it was just a great time. It was. It was a strong comeback, and I felt everyone's energy that year. And and, and for you, it must have been even more exciting because this is, this is the zone you just said you wanted to end with. But now that you're here, you're like, I don't want to leave. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's... It's one of the funnest areas, in my opinion. Like, every time when I would get off from work in the previous years, except for 2017, uh, so 2018, 2019, I would go and I would sit in Carnival and just watch. And, yeah. like, everyone would just, like, have such a fun time. And I feel like, this is so great. <laughs> and, like, honestly, in Carnival, I feel like you could do anything and it's justifiable because you're a clown Clowns just about are supposed to do weird shit and yeah. i do weird shit <laughs> that it's a fact you can and i'm not serious when i say this you can get away with murder there and they wouldn't even know oh absolutely <laughs> like, no this dead body's a prop yeah i didn't no. kill this person that's not blood that's there's not ketchup. You d d roll the tapes you don't got tapes <laughs> that's ketchup and soy sauce it's not blood come on it's it, you gotta go even old. Uh, i mean it wouldn't work today obviously because it was in black and white but you gotta go even more old school psycho yeah. chocolate syrup yes <laughs> <laughs> oh man i i i i legitimate legitimately had a great time last season i think it, honestly i i think the excitement of just coming back and, and seeing everybody seeing everybody do their thing and to to just sit in i to, i actually got to sit in carnival way more this year than i ever have sat in any scare zone um in the past and and just to sit there and watch all my friends do their thing and 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 just talk with people and communicate like i remember we'd be in the back area where you guys are, are kind of just chill you know that's where you guys go in the back and i'd be sitting there and like i would have conversations with just just about everyone that walk in and out because they'd see me all the time or they knew who i was and and we would just we just talk for like just the, the brief period that you guys had um was really cool to just to chat with you guys see how you guys' night was going how everything was how was everything was running and and what, what's been going on and stuff so that was easily the highlight of my year was just sitting in that area just chatting with a lot of you guys it was, it was a lot of fun to just see what everyone's mindset were, was 100 yeah. percent i mean i that's one of my favorite zones now i that's why i bought the hat that's why i wore the hat today that's <laughs> gotta why i wore represent. it you gotta represent so opening night this has to be the probably most electric opening night you've ever had in your life because there was a year off of haunt and us fans were craving to go back and step into these street zones. What was the what was the nerves like compared to previous years going into this year? Um honestly, there were no nerves. Like I wasn't nervous at all. I was ready to get out there. I was so excited and like the the design that I made for my clown Bobbins. Yeah. Uh, she's like she's a sewing clown. Right. And like you know, I, I do professional cosplay, so, like, sewing is very close to me. And yeah. it's, like, one of the things that I grew up with, even as, like, a small child. Mm -hmm. uh, and so being able to bring this, like, stitchy, weird-looking person to life, Oof. it was so great. <laughs> it, was like, so, it was such a good, <laughs> not only good costume, but it was just a good, the makeup was good, the the hair was perfect like all the props <laughs> everything was good and if i'm not mistaken was this the first year you got to full-time slide yes oh my god sliding was so much fun i've been wanting to slide for the past two years 
but uh, yeah, because in Forsaken it. Lake, uh, as a griever, like the dress, you can't slide. Yeah, it's not a sliding position. Can't even attempt to do it. Right. And then 2020 happened. No hunt. Uh, and so this last year, 2021, I was like, I am so ready. <laughs> I'm gonna tear up the streets. Boom. <laughs> comes in and kills the game again and I, I like I said there was moments I've seen where I was just laughing my ass off I've seen her step up to people because they were trying to act tough and just shuts them down real quick I've seen her torture the hell out of kids as they're trying to act tough in zones it is the funniest thing ever I I've just had the pleasure of sitting there and just watching all the chaos just abrupt it was it was great 100% <laughs> It was such such a good year. So, going into that year, uh, mid to end haunt season, man, like you kind of had enough, hopefully enough time to figure out, and you probably already had things figure out, but to to evolve and adapt your onto your character as the season went on. Uh, how did it go from the start all the way to the end? Uh, from the start to the end, it definitely got more and more hectic and chaotic and like let loose right kind of just noodly i there's the best way i can describe it just noodle hectic noodles right um but yeah just all kinds of crazy stuff like in the beginning it was like kind of tame like i would more so kind of use like a high voice with like yeah. kind of a gravel to it but then more that i got into it i was like oh like, it's unsettling if I sound like a very deep-voiced man in this tiny body that I have. I know. It was like from one... It was like it was like opening night. I heard, like, a high, high voice. And then one night I was like, hey, what's up? I was like, who the hell? What? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Was, got, a, got a good vocal range. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, like I said, we would we would constantly quote Beetlejuice every night because that's who I thought you sounded like when I, yeah. was, when I, I would hear I, you. <laughs> I, I did base the voice off of uh, specifically Alex Brightman's Beetlejuice from okay. the Beetlejuice musical. I would love to see that one day, and I'm going to try to see it next year. It's such a good show. Yeah, I, uh, I've I heard great things. I think it's coming to Pantages this year, actually. Is it this year or next year? Point. I think it's this year. Okay, I got to look up, but I, yeah, I want to get tickets to that to see it. Same here. So that that's, yeah, Beetlejuice, iconic. Um Going into the end, though, when you guys... So were you part of the uh, the invading of the Goring Twenties? Uh, no, I was actually on my lunch break, and I missed the entire thing. And everyone... You, you probably walked out like, oh, thanks for the invite. Appreciate it. I would have been like, yeah. screw lunch and left. I, I was upset. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck, guys? <laughs> You're like, come on. Like, really? Didn't even, like, give me a hint or... No? Okay. I, I, I mean, I've heard it just kind of happened in the moment. Yeah, like, I don't even know who had planned it. I think that they just did it. Yeah. Because I think that Goring 20s was planning a raid into Carnival, but right. then we heard about it, and we're like, okay, we're going to get the jump on them. And Carnival marched in first. Marching in, stomped down the doors, and came like the hammer of Thor. On Darn them. right. That's awesome. No, I, I love... Chicken screaming, horns yeah. honking. Yep. <laughs> All that fun stuff. You got you got preachers preaching in Goring Twenties. You got women trying to sell cigars to you, and, and you're mm -hmm. over here like a clown. Like, do I look like I smoke? Because <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But yeah, that's awesome. That uh, to, to see uh, Carnival. From what I've been told, too, that was the first time in a good long while that they actually won the uh, Street of the Year or Scare Zone of the of the Year. Yeah. 10 years. 10 years in the making and yeah, to come back on a years. high. Ooh. So 2011 yep. was the last time they won it. And <laughs> now 2021. And after COVID, everyone was just ready to go. Yeah. That's that's amazing. So before we, we talk about a little bit of what we can potentially maybe get a little little teaser of what we could see in the future, I want to talk to you a little bit about another world you're, you're part of, which you, you did bring up earlier, which is the cosplay world. Um, and I think that's that's how we, we really took off as, as friends and, and how we met each other was um, we, we would just talk about, you know, a lot of various uh, 
geek related stuff that we had interest in. And then right before we went on, we were talking about Doctor Strange and and, and Marvel. Um, talk to talk to us a little bit about your cosplay. I know you're really big in that world too. A lot of people uh, will come up to you and recognize you, and you got a big social media following on that. So talk to us a little bit about how that goes for you, and 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 what's the most fun that you have doing it. Oh, well, I've been cosplaying since 2013, I believe. My first time, like, really getting into right. doing cosplays and going to conventions uh, was in high school. One of my friends was like, hey, I have an extra ticket for Anime Expo. It's next month. Make us some costumes. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and I, you know, could have just made one costume and called it a day, but I made four. Right. <laughs> one for each day. And it was great. I had a great time. Right. And then it kind of just went off after that and i've been getting better and better doing bigger things more detailed stuff and yeah i'm just really proud of how far it's come i i see some amazing work from you. i think one of my favorites that you've done and you've done a lot of great ones um so shout out to you for creating a lot of those because i know that's a very <laughs> time consuming process and takes a lot of time and, and effort to, to perfect it how you want it um Absolutely. But I think easily one of my favorites is when WandaVision dropped and you did the the Scarlet Witch um, with Agatha Harkness uh, cosplay duo uh, team right there. That was that was phenomenal. <laughs> Thank you. Easily, I mean, I, that, that's just me being an MCU fan and a Scarlet Witch fan. <laughs> but you know, yeah. No, Scarlet Witch is she's. I think she's on a goat level now. Um, she can't I be touched. I love Scarlet Witch. I mean, I've, I've loved Scarlet Witch as a kid, even like right. I saw her in the comics and I was like. I want to be that when I grow up. You're like, I and saw her I X-Men days before she got in the MCU. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You're like, uh, and the, the Scarlet Witch I know, her dad is Magneto. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, no, Scarlet Witch is is really, uh, it's it's become a character that uh, since its debut in, in Avengers Age of Ultron for the MCU, I guess it's just blown up. And it really, to see her journey of suffering and pain to end up where she's at now. You just can't blame her. You can't blame her. Can't. It's girl's just. Girls gotta do what a girl's gotta do. Sometimes yeah. you just I mean, gotta. Uh, let's. Look up I mean, let's let's really think about that though. She lost her, her brother, yeah. in the very first movie that she was introduced. That broke my heart. I was like, no. I was like, we just got Quicksilver. We already lost him. This is bullshit. Um, she lost her the the one person she's ever really loved. Um, and she, hole in his head. not only, yeah, not only that, she had to kill him first, Thanos reverses time, and then Thanos kills him. So she had to watch him die twice. Um, and then she just wanted to be happy and left alone. So she tried to make her own world based off TV sitcoms with a perfect world where her and Vision have kids. And we all know how that went. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, with that being said, Scarlet Witch will return in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. All right. <laughs> but, no, it, it, to see you pull off a lot of these cosplays, and I know uh, the Renaissance Fair is going on right now. Um, a lot of people are going out to that. I got to see uh, on your story the other day you doing some cool cosplays of that. Um, Anime Expo, I can't wait to see what we see at uh, Midsummer Scream. Um, you did a Krampus one, too, didn't you, in, in December? Uh, yes, I did. Krampus, because uh, I have those very expensive uh, like <laughs> digileg animals still. Right, right. Uh, and they are kind of hard to walk in. Like, I definitely would like to practice with them more. Right. But my, I was very happy with how my Krampus turned out. It was very just, like, unsettling. It was so bitchin'. Thank you. <laughs> it was dope. It really was. And, I, and I'm a huge Krampus fan. I like the whole lore and, and story of it. But even that film... Krampus is just such such an iconic film, and then when they did the maze in HHN, so iconic. So to see you do that at a, at um, what was it a season screamings, yeah. um, uh, in December to kind of represent Christmas but horror was was really cool. I remember w the the week leading up to that of of your stories of you constantly working tirelessly to get it done before the weekend. <laughs> um, so much like I said, much respect to you because this community is a very um. You have to be very patient. You're going to get frustrated, and um, it's going to take time. But when the end result is done, it's going to look amazing. Absolutely. It takes so much time and effort. Yeah. And it's costly. I mean. But I love it. <laughs> you, I mean, just think about how I feel. I mean, you you sold full-on costumes, so I, I can get your frustration. 
I get frustrated just sewing on a patch on my vest. That's about that big. <laughs> And so yeah. I can only imagine what you go through. I mean, <laughs> I get pissed off when I get poked, and I'm like, I hate this so much, and then I give up. Oh, I'm used to it. I'm used to hot glue burns. Yep. Needle pricks. Stuff yep. going through my hands. Like, oh, look at that. I've nope. been impaled. We got Time blood. I not get blood on this costume. <laughs> I can't get blood on my costume. I feel like it needs to become a drinking game at this point. Like, <laughs> just list off the, the, the tropes of, of what normally would happen during a, a, a costume making process. And every time something happens, like, we take a shot. Oh, my God. I mean, I think we'd be hammered by the end of the game, but... You'd have to go to be, the hospital. It, it probably, yeah. <laughs> We're just going to drink the whole bottle, just... <laughs> oh man, it'd be it'd be something, but yeah, that that's cool to see that, and I can't wait to see what you got lined up for the future. I know you, uh, you, you it was really another re, a re, another reason why it was really hard for us to connect to, to do this podcast too. Is you are constantly also doing shoots a lot to to uh, further promote um, other cosplays and which now which you should be because these cosplays are very amazing, so they need to be yeah. showcased to the world. Um, so. It was just a hard time for me, and then my scheduling and your schedule. So I'm just glad we got it done, and I'm glad we were here at this moment, and I'm glad that you finally made your podcast, Mindless Horror Podcast debut. Thank you. It's I'm been, glad it's, to be here. It's been three years in the making, but we finally got it <laughs> on the fifth anniversary of Nights of Horror. We got them. <laughs> Five years, man. We got them. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, we got her. <laughs> um... So before I let you go, I need to know. Uh, hopefully, can we see you return to NOS this year? And oh, absolutely! Bobbins is coming back with Bobbins full force. Bobbins is coming back full forces. And 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 without giving away too much, do you have uh, plans or ideas that you didn't get to try last season that you're definitely going to go for this season, or are you just going to roll with it? Um, I think I'm definitely going to try to slide more because actually during, I think like a little over halfway through the run of last year, I got a injury oh. in my hip. And like, I have bad hips in general, just my joints are crap. Uh, and the pain in my hip would prevent me from sliding and even kind of prevent me from walking. But right. I still went out on the street anyway, cause I'm no bitch. <laughs> Mama didn't raise no bitch. <laughs> Mama didn't raise no bitch. So I went out every night and like even if i didn't even have my pads on i would still just kind of walk midway slowly limping right. trying not to do like too much but still doing you know what we're there to freaking do because right. i'm not about to half-ass it and let everyone else take you know like take the slack off me right like i'm gonna pull my freaking weight even if i'm hurt you're doing it going full force you're like it's a hundred percent it's it's nerf or nothing <laughs> <laughs> it's nerf or nothing. It's nerf or Absolutely. nothing. Absolutely. You go big or you go home. Go and big I or go went home. big. I refused to go home. <laughs> You're like, I'm not sitting it out. This is what I've been working towards. <laughs> I'm finishing this season. Yep. Oh, but man. Now, uh, that, now that my hip injury is better, uh, I plan to, at some point when I'm not as busy, uh, try to go sliding somewhere yeah. uh, just to get back into the swing of things. And I'm going to get back going yeah yeah a bunch of physical stuff like going hiking and all that and whatever <laughs> but just get my physical ante back up Dude. so that i have enough energy for haunt i feel like i don't ever even have to go to the gym or any of that because my work i've lost so much weight just working at my job especially all the lifting i do on the daily and everything and all yeah. the walking i'm just like people are like you want to go to the gym i'm like no because i go to the gym all week and i don't like, want to okay. i got my own <laughs> version of exercise and it's called work <laughs> but you yeah. go and you change your body for what you want to go for i'm i'm 100% yeah yeah but i'm not going to go i'm going to go eat <laughs> um that is it, it seems like uh you got you got yourself a little a little plan going on for for the 2022 season the 49th annual not scary farm um, very much looking forward to that. Final two questions I got for you was, uh, if you can work at any other haunt for one night, um, whether it's a dream passion or whatnot, what haunt would you go to and why? Um, honestly, I don't know. Uh, I've actually never been ever like even visited Six Flags. Right. Um, but when Queen Mary was still a thing, actually, I would have wanted to go to Queen Mary for one night. Ooh, 
That'd be a fun one. Yeah, I'd be a street monster there. Be uh, definitely something to um, maybe hold on to. I don't know when. Hopefully that event comes back. I, I very much am crossing my fingers. Probably not this yeah. year, but maybe next year. <laughs> hopefully. I know. I want it back so bad. It was such a good event. But uh, final question. I wish I had the sound effect on my, my, my microphone, but I don't. I got to download <laughs> that. I'm going to download that just for this question. What's your favorite scary movie? What's my favorite scary movie? Uh, it's actually a whole ass series. I love the Insidious series. Insidious is good. Yep. Bride and Black still the scares Insidious the shit series. out of me. Yes. <laughs> Have you ever thought about any doing any cosplays from that sh- from those movies? Um, I have thought about it. Yeah. Uh, actually, for Midsummer Scream, I'm actually bringing back the Crooked Man oh, from Conjuring. So you'll nice. see that on the show floor. I think on Saturday night. Nice. And uh, my boyfriend is coming with me and we're making him the fairy man from okay annabelle comes home okay we're going straight yeah. conjuring universe i love it hell yeah that'd be good going some good photo force. ops right there <laughs> full force i'm yeah. coming in as uh as the nun yes do it <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know if i could pull that look off honestly to be honest i had to I have to shave and everything. I have to get clean shaven like the morning of. It's <laughs> it'd be a mess. And then by the time freaking five o'clock rolls around, I got five o'clock shadow. So <laughs> it's just how it be. Swerve, it has been an absolute pleasure, and I'm glad we finally got to do this. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to uh, give us a little bit of time for for the channel, man. I, I I'm so glad we finally got to do this, and and honestly, it's just been um, a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, thank you for having me, my friend. It was um, a blast. Had a good yeah. time. It's, it was. We got, we talked about a lot of fun things and, and stuff. But if people want to continue to follow you on social media, where can they find you at? Uh, they can either follow my haunt-specific page, which is KSF underscore Swerve. That's where you can get all Bobbins-related content. Uh, and then if you want to follow my cosplay page, it is peppered period up period cosplays. There it is. Go follow. Tell, them, tell her Knights of Horse sent you. Cause uh, Blow that shit up. we wanna we wanna get her we wanna get her more followers and stuff. But yeah, you got a haunt one to choose from. You got her cosplay. I suggest you just follow both. I mean, don't even. <laughs> there's not even an option because hey. you're gonna see some very creative stuff on both channels. So both pages. Um, other than that, I, I'm I, I can't wait to see what you do in 2022, and I can't wait to see what goes down at Midsummer Screen with those cosplays. And you know, I'll be there for both. So. We're looking forward to it. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> With all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys are new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button and that bell notification to be aware every time we put up a new video. Smash that like button and, and leave some comments down for a Swerve. Let her know. Give her, give her the love tonight. You know, like in the words of Dr. Disrespect, give her give her some love, man. Show her some <laughs> peace and love. That's all, we, uh, that's all we love here on this channel, some peace and love. We love love. We love love. All you need is love. The Beatles did it the best. Life needs things to live. (laughs) Yep. Um, But follow us on social media at the Knights of Horror on Instagram and at Knights of Horror on Twitter. And uh, with all that being said, I'm your host, Anthony. That's my guest, Swerve. And we will see you in the fog. See you in the fog.